compared to what you've done in the past is you probably, the extent of using trig has been to solve right triangles, right? And they're just kind of floating around in space. Um, but we're actually going to put them into the coordinate plane. So on the x, y axis, we're going to look at some stuff there. But first of all, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, there are six ratios that you need to be familiar with, and I've got them there on your paper so we don't have to spend a lot of time um, just writing this down. But if we have our right triangle here, theta is the angle on the bottom, then you know that, you know, Sokotoa, sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, that's three of them. You may not have seen the other three. We call these three reciprocal. We call these three reciprocal uh, tree ratios because they are the reciprocal. You flip over sine to get cosine. Okay, so I have the words written out to the side. Um, but the abbreviation is CSC, is cosecant. It's the hypotenuse over the opposite. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that means it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So tangents, the reciprocal of tangents, so it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or excuse me, the adjacent over the opposite. One way to remember which one goes with which, notice um, there are never two cos paired together. Okay, sine and cosecant. Cosine and secant, tangent, cosine. That would be easier for you, you just have to remember these two. Um, but there are two cos that are not paired together. Sine and cosecant, cosine and secant. Um, so we're going to deal with these six ratios today. If we are given information about one trig ratio, then we can easily find the other five. So if we are told that the sine of theta is equal to five over six, I want to find the other five trig ratios. Now, I don't care what theta is. Yes, we could find out what the angle is. How could we solve for the angle here? The inverse, okay, yeah. use the inverse. Inverse sine of 5 over 6 will give you the angle. I'm not worried about that right now. We'll deal with that um, in a week or so. Right now, I just want to, based on this information, I want to find out, well, okay, what's the ratio for cosine? What's the ratio for tangent? Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So if this is the information I'm given, I know that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, you don't necessarily have to draw a triangle for every single one of them, but I think at least in the, in the beginning stages here, it's a good idea to have that visual. So, I've got the triangle set up for you already. Five is the opposite. Six is the hypotenuse. Well, to figure out several of the other trig ratios, I need the adjacent side. Well, if this is a right triangle, how can I figure out the adjacent side? Pythagorean theorem, right? <clears throat> So a squared plus 5 squared is equal to 6 squared. The two legs squared added together equals the hypotenuse squared. So a squared plus 25 equals 36. That says a squared equals 11. We need to take the square root. Well, 11 is <coughs> excuse me, not a perfect square, so we're going to leave it as the square root of 11. We're going to leave it as the square root of 11. So, cosine is the adjacent square root of 11 over the hypotenuse, 6. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, we'll talk more about this later, but usually we do not leave square roots in the denominator of a fraction. So we do what we call rationalizing. To get rid of that square root in the denominator, we're going to multiply this top and bottom by the square root of 11. That gives us 5 times the square root of 11 in the top. When you multiply a square root of something times the square root of the same thing, Square roots essentially cancel each other out, okay, because you multiply what's under the square roots. Well, 11 times 11 is 121. The square root of 121 is 11. Okay, 
So uh, you may see, I can't, I can't remember in the back of the book whether they rationalize it or they don't when they put the answers. Uh, I'm pretty sure on my paper uh, I did rationalize, um, but you may see the answer like this, or you may see it in, in rationalized form, but it is the same thing, and I'll, show, uh, I'll prove it to you. Okay, if I type that into my calculator, 5 divided by the square root of 11, it's going to give me the same thing as 5 times the square root of 11 divided by 11. I know they look very different, but they do indeed give the exact same value. I'm fine with either one. I just wanted to show you in case I couldn't, like I said, I can't remember how the back of the book has it. Let's do the reciprocals. Okay, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I can take sine's ratio and I just flip it over. So the, cos the ratio for cosecant is 6 over 5. The ratio for secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's 6 over the square root of 11. Again, if you want to put it in rationalized form, that would be 6 times the square root of 11 over 11. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. I'm going to go back to the original one, the square root of 11 over 5. And those are the other five trick ratios, just based on the information that they told us about sine. We could find those other five. All right. Let's look at B. B is the secant of the angle is equal to 26 over 24. The way that I go through this as I think, okay, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that means secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So my hypotenuse is 26, my adjacent is 24. Yes, I do realize that 26 over 25 simplifies. Um, but for this specific triangle, we need to leave it the way it is so we can correctly determine that third leg. Pythagorean theorem again. Okay, 24 squared plus, it's the opposite, but I'm not going to use an O because O's look like zeros and you don't want to think of it at zero squared. So I'm going to stick with B. So let's see here, not going to lie, I am not doing 26 squared and 24 squared in my head. Because I can about promise you that I will mess that one up. Um, 26 squared is 676, 24 squared is 576. So that means B squared equals 100 when we subtract. So B equals 10. Opposite side equals 10. That's nice because now we don't have to deal with radicals. Okay, so I'm going to start with sine. I always do them in order just because it's easier to keep up with them. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Like I said, I'm not going to simplify them. I'm just going to leave them. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Reciprocals, flip them over. Cosecant is 26 over 10. Secant is 26 over 24, which we already had that. We really didn't have to write that one again. Cotangent is 24 over 10. There are your six trig ratios for this triangle. Now, what does this tell me? What this is telling you is, again, we don't know what they is. We could figure it out, okay? Uh, but we really don't care. But what we do know is that if we're looking at sine, the ratio of the legs is that the opposite is 10 and the hypotenuse is 26. And that's what these ratios are telling you. They're, they're giving you information about the legs. That's not all we're looking for right now. We're going to deal more with them later, but that's about all we know right now.